today we would have been in Baltimore, or these voices would have been in yes. Baltimore. Right. And that, of course, the voices of the New York Yankees. First, Susan Waldman. Susan, how uh, are you? Hi, Hello, guys. Susan. I'm, I'm okay. Hi, Joe. Hi, Evan. I'm sitting here and I'm watching David Cohn pitch to Sandy Alomar 1996. <laughs> I think this is going to turn out to be a pretty good year, 1996. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But, you know, but there's somebody there's somebody missing here because this is the longest I've ever been away from this guy <laughs> at this time, kind of year. And I uh, asked Aaron Boone yesterday about the opening day lineup and he wouldn't tell me. So I am guessing that who is going to be the uh, the opening day leadoff hitter. So, as Brett Gardner steps up to the plate, stepping up to the microphone, <laughs> is the voice of the New York Yankees. Here is John Sterling. Well, thank you, Susan. And once again, <laughs> what a beautiful afternoon for opening day here at Camden Yards. Well, oh, that's the fantasy part. Degrees, they say. There you go. How you yeah. doing, John? How are you, John? Degrees, yeah. What, what's well, the very good. In Baltimore, 59 in Baltimore? Not bad. Not That's bad. what I'm hearing, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's pretty nice here, too. Susan, you, you, know, you, um, I, you yeah, tried and ahead. so did we. We had Aaron Boone on last hour, and it's yeah, funny. he wouldn't give us we, the answer. We tried to get that answer. So what would the lineup be like? And he's like, yeah, a lot of people have asked me, but I'm – I'm not going to tell you. So it, it he is did a give us guess. the rotation, though. He did do that. He yeah, gave Garrett us the Cole's pitching. Right. <laughs> right. He did give us the rotation, oh, gee, though. Really? He did. Wait, I, I better write that down. <laughs> you know, you know, John actually is the best at at lineups, and I'm not quite sure what that was about because on the conference call yesterday, all the writers were trying to try and get him to say what the lineup would be, and I'm not quite sure. Um, what was going on there? I know Stanton would probably be be ready, so he would be in it. Um, but I, I don't know. But John, all the time in spring training, take you know, does his laps in the pool, and he makes lineups. So I bet John has a lineup for us. <laughs> well, I have a lineup, but I don't know if it's Aaron Boone's. I can't even imagine why Aaron Boone wouldn't tell you what his lineup would have been here on March 26th where we'd be lucky if we're playing games on, on May 26th. I mean, so even if he let you out on that secret, I don't think Baltimore could go to school on it. But I really expect, now that um, Susan told me that Stanton is, is ready to go, so you'd have you know Stanton, Gardner, and Clint Frazier, who had a very good spring left to right, you know, with Judge being out, and um, obviously... The, the line of the infield is set. Geo at uh, third, and uh, Glaber Torres is at short. DJ at second, and Void at first. I think Ann Duhar would have been the DH, and obviously Gary Sanchez would be the catcher. And I think we can assume that Garrett Cole <laughs> would be the pitcher. And um, and there you go. It 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 is a very odd time in our lives. Uh, by far the most odd time in my life. Where, along with Susan and Joe and Evan, we've had sports basically every day. You know, when there's a, an odd day off, let's say during the All Star break, there's no football, basketball, or mm-hmm. or hockey, right, and right, baseball. Right. You know, has a day or so. I usually watch. <laughs> I know I'm nuts, but uh, I usually watch the uh, the AAA All Star game on one of those off nights. So it really is odd not having sports and it tells you how much they're missed and it tells you how much sports bring us together. Do you guys, I'll, I'll start you with you, Sue. Sue, let me, let me just ask uh-huh. you, do you have a, I'll start with you and then I'll ask John this question. Do you have a specific opening day that you remember that kind of jumps out at you? I, I mm. don't remember what year it is, but um, opening day always, even when I was a little girl, um, was it, it was so special. And I remember being a, a little girl and waking up, and I always wake up, and I did it again today. 4.30 in the morning, I am up. John is not, but I <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have to later. But I, I am always up, and, and I remembered when I was a little girl, we had just moved into our house in Newton, Massachusetts, and, um, and I woke up and it was snowing. And I remember my father saying to me, don't worry, it'll stop before the game and and Vinny Orlando will have the field fine. And that obviously was in Boston. And it was. And I can remember it. I mean, just like mm. I, it, like it was yesterday. I remember that. And today I was telling John when I was talking to him, whom I talked to twice a day because I'm, <laughs> you know, we're, I'm not used to being away from John. Um, and I, I was thinking today it really got me. 
I woke up and the Orioles had sent me the thing that they sent to their fans with Jim Palmer narrating it. And I got up and it's five in the morning and it's dark and I really felt it for the first time. And it's 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 really awful. It's really an awful thing. As a matter of fact, I'm sitting here watching. Um, Alan Embry is now um, <laughs> Alan is now pitching to Mariano Duncan. I'm watching opening day 1996. It's on MLB. So that's what that's what I'm watching right now. I think that year turned out pretty well. But that's I don't remember what year it was, guys, but I I do remember that feeling of oh my goodness, it's it's snowing. What's going to happen? Mm-hmm. Susan was the the first game of Joe No, no, that was in Cleveland. So it must be 98 the day that we Broadcast open today at the stadium, and it snowed like hell. No, you know what it was, John? Because we were well, talking about this. Was that 96. was the, you're, you're you're spot on about ninety six. It was the home opener. Yes. with Andy Pettit on the mat against the yeah. Royals. So it was yeah. about a week later after yeah. the game. Susan's watching Absolutely. now. Right. Oh, that was, was the year ninety eight um, was a very high score, it was a football score, and they they put the score on a football and gave it to Brian Cashman. That was his first day <laughs> as the GM. In 96 and 97, Bob Watson was the, the right, GM. Right. Um, I, I remember opening days that were uh, I- instrumental in my life. The first game I ever did, I was so excited. My goodness. I was the junior member of the Braves four, broadcast, uh, four broadcasters. And we opened up in Cincinnati, and Gary Breedis hit a home run to win the game for the Reds. And then my first game as a Yankee broadcaster. Do you think, can you imagine how excited I was? I knew they were an awful team. It was 1989. But an opening night in uh, Minnesota at the the old uh, Metrodome, or whatever it was called. Is it called Metrodome? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, Tommy John pitched, and he, he pitched brilliantly, and the Yankees won the game. Two to nothing was not indicative of the year they were going to have. But anyway, those are the opening days I remember. But I really remember the the snow game. I just didn't remember which year it was. Yeah. You know, it's funny, John. I've I've been watching a lot of old games, kind of like Susan is with 1996. So I've watched a ton of games over the last couple of days. And one of the moments I kind of slipped on or found was your call. And this, this, this may be, I don't know if you feel this way, Top five greatest call you've ever had, and that's the Rick Camp home run with that crazy Mets Braves game. Oh, that, oh, that's right. You would have. That was that was the the fourth of July into the fifth yes. of July. You, you, that's right. You did that. You were with the Braves then, right? Oh, that was some game. Oh my um, god! There was a, a rain delay yep. during the yep. game, and the uh, the Mets took a three run lead in the bottom of the thirteenth. And Terry Harper hit a two-out, three-run home run against the foul screen in left field to tie it. And then Rick Camp hit his tying three-run home run. I didn't like my call at all. Oh, come on. It was I, great. John, it was great. Well, Can we find that somewhere? It's got to yes. be somewhere, I'm gonna right? get. We'll get, we, have to, we have to play we gotta, it at we some point. we got to dig that up, John. Oh, it's tremendous. But uh, I, obviously, I'll remember it to my... <laughs> to my darling day. <laughs> and you don't know that Rick Camp was considered, you know, like... Um, Sandy Koufax or Bob Buell or Couldn't Hank hit. Aguirre. It was thought of as the worst hitting pitcher in baseball. Al Leiter. <laughs> and, and I'll set the scene for you. Um, one game, I was working with Skip Carey, and Camp came up, <clears throat> and uh, we were kidding about you know what a phenomenally bad hitter he was. And, and I, I used an old Russ Hodges line. I gave Russ Hodges name credit. I always do. And uh, and Russ Hodges would say, uh, anyone up there swinging a shillelagh is dangerous. And so Skip said, well, obviously he didn't see Rick Camp. <laughs> and um, anyway, so so uh, two pitches before Camp at the home run, I said, if Rick Camp hits a three-run home run to tie the game, it will certify this game as the craziest in history. And two pitches later, he hit the three-run home run. And... Uh, yeah, no one remembers that. Then the Mets scored five runs in the 19th inning to win the game. <laughs> it was something. 
16 13, you know, I think I actually, was the final. I actually um, played that for John. He was in the car, and I saw it online, and I played it for him, and he actually said the same thing. I didn't like my call in that, <laughs> but he couldn't really hear it. But but I was playing it to him over the loudspeaker as he was in as he was in his car. You know what's um it, what's interesting? I had called some of the Baltimore guys. They gave me their lineup, no problem. Oh really? Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's Would hear it. I'm kind of curious now. It would be okay. This is what, and one guy I wasn't. I didn't even know he was there. I, they, they, this is what they thought would happen. Um, the center fielder Austin Hayes, the kid, would be the leadoff hitter. Hans or Alberto at second base, batting second. In right field would would be Anthony Santander. Chris Davis, who really had a great spring, yeah. and I think maybe he's whatever, would be at first base, the the cleanup hitter. Renato Nunez is the DH. Did you know that Jose Iglesias was the short? Shortstop on this team. <laughs> that's the that's the fun, I mean, Susan. That's the fun part about the start of a baseball season. Right. You start to like see, oh, <laughs> he's there now. Oh, okay. Not exactly a bunch of Isn't household that... names on the Orioles here. I mean, well, let's be uh, real. Well, we've seen them nineteen <laughs> times. So yeah, uh, Dwight Smith would be in left. The catcher would be Pedro Severino, and Rio Ruiz, who actually can hit a little bit, would be the third baseman and the starting pitcher. Would be the left-hander John Means, Trey Mancini, obviously on the injured list, but they they had no problem you, giving me what their best guess of the lineup go. was. So, if there was a 162 game season, would they lose fewer games than the 108 they lost last year? Oh well, they've got they've got better pitchers. I think they've got uh, Wade, and then they at least they have real names on that uh, staff now. Besides Means and Alex Cobb, Wade LeBlanc is now on that team. Tommy Malone, who actually can pitch a little bit, um, I have no idea that it doesn't really <laughs> it doesn't really give you a lot of hope when you look at this this lineup. Their closer is Michael Givens, and he's one of those guys. He's such a great guy, but the closer he gets to the ninth inning, the worse he gets. <laughs> you know what I mean? When he was in the middle, he was great. And then as they moved back and back, as uh, Richard Blyer still on that team, we know him. Um, Hector Velasquez came over from the Red Sox. We, we know all about our little Orioles that we see now for uh, 19 times a year. John and I would have been at our favorite restaurant in Baltimore called the Prime Rib. Mm. And Jack Maldonado and John and I and, and Gary Thorne do this every time we're in Baltimore, our favorite place. And we're all sitting in four different places in New York, in the New York area. It's very odd. Very strange. Well, before you know it, at at some point, this will happen in Baltimore. Maybe June, maybe July, but it will happen. We we will take a quick break. We've got more coming up. We've got the great Susan Wallman, the great John Sterling. We'll even take some of your calls with them. So if you want to call on in, 877-337-6666. It is Beningo and Roberts here in the afternoon. 